So the last time I took this tape head, which is a magnetic tape head out of an old cassette player, and I basically took it out of the cassette deck and um, I took out the wiring. The wiring for these is just includes a uh, single wire for a ground at the lower part of the picture and two wires for the upper part, which because it's a stereo tape head. I then connected the two upper wires together um, to make it a mono tape head and put it all through a very basic op amp preamplifier circuit as can be seen here. Um, the voltage divider is in the negative feedback loop and that's providing the amplification, the gain, and then the output goes through a 100 microfarad capacitor. Final output goes out to an amplifier that's connected to a stereo system or speakers. In my case, it's a quarter inch jack that uh, gets connected to a guitar amp. And then when you ran the tape head across a, a pre-recorded tape, it worked like a charm and reproduced a signal and DJ scratches and any other kind of things you did with the head over the tape. I then made this crude uh, tape head off of uh, based on a, a washer with a gap in it and I wrapped enamel coated copper wire around it uh, multiple times um, and then when I connected that this head um, in a similar fashion to the output of an mp3 player and held it near the tape head it transmitted the audio signal perfectly uh, to the uh, pre-wired tape head that was uh, manufactured. Today's experiment, I'm gonna see if this head can function as a playback head for um, in the reverse order so that the tape head from the cassette deck can transmit the signal and basically function as a record head and transmit the signal to this um, makeshift crude tape head and to see if the two if two of these can um transmit an audio signal to one another all right let's try this one more time let's see if i can get it to play the angle has to be just right Noisy, but it works. Hopefully you guys can hear this, because I could definitely hear. It has to be held at just the right angle. So in that way, this is now the record head. And this guy here is the play head. So proof of concept, um, that works. So here's the ultimate proof of concept. I made another one of these tape heads and that's gonna be the play head. And I have this as the record head and with the little gap. And if I uh, play music from it, Let's see how it transmits. I don't even have to be touching them. And there's the magnetic field being transmitted. Let's see if I could prove that it's not just the magnets touching that can make it happen. See? 
See, I have the insulating piece of paper here. Works fairly well. And you can see this. Let's see on the oscilloscope here. Let's make it 100 millivolt division. There's an actual signal. I say that was a successful experiment. DIY tape head. How about that? So what I've learned from all these experiments is that these um, makeshift tape heads can be made very easily and they work very well as a record head, i.e. transmitting a signal from an audio source uh, to a dedicated playhead. It doesn't function as well as a playhead from a pre-manufactured tape head, uh, but they do interface with one another fairly well. What, um, I, what it doesn't do well is read a uh, pre-recorded tape very well because the gap on this is sort of crude and makeshift and uh, gaps uh, in the... Um, professionally manufactured uh, tape heads are much smaller in the range of 10 microns in width. And so I just don't have the capacity to make something like that. Um, so I'm going to use the pre-made uh, tape head and build something with that and maybe incorporate this into a different kind of noise-making circuit.